Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to tie a kind of a mini muddler. Uh, it's certainly a pattern that is not commonly used here in Canada, but it is an extremely effective fly pattern to be used in both our lakes and in our rivers and creeks. Um, I enjoy it a lot because it pushes or moves a lot of a lot of water and. Uh, let's the trout out there know that there's a presence of something moving and they often come and check it out just by um, sound or listening to or listening for the movement uh, so with the pattern pushing a lot of water it uh, has a tendency to attract a lot of attention so what I've mounted is a Hens BL 599 in a size 10 using nano silk and a 12 aught in white and then I'll mount some straggle string and the idea of this in the tail section here is really just to create a small dam for when I put my rabbit wing on it'll force it to work over this dam and open and close a bit more or pulsate as you might say as you'll see when it's in, in the water being fished so I'll just run two or three layers right near the back here just to create this little dam. You know, this, and this is not uncommon to do this on larger patterns, especially things like steelhead intruders. So you create this dam for other material to work around or over top and create <coughs> forcing it to pulsate. So now I'll just take some rabbit hair. This is just a, an olive. It's just a, a rabbit strip. And I'll just wet a little bit of hair here just to, so it's easier to work with. You don't want to put it on too thick. Uh, the profile is fairly, actually fairly slender, but it does create a fairly good sized set of shoulders with the deer hair on, on the fly pattern which wouldn't be uncommon for chubs and a lot of lake minnows. So a little bit there, go to the underside. Add a bit more. You try again. Try not to over overdress the pattern. Try not to make it too 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 much of a full dress, I guess. You have to be careful with this nano silk, not to pull it too tight to cut so as to not to uh, cut the rabbit hair. So as you can see it sort of forces it over top. And then we'll just clean up this front end a bit. And I'll just lash down the, the butt ends of this rabbit hair up into behind the eye of the hook. So now all I add is uh, some picric acid dyed deer hair. This is roe deer. Uh, you can certainly use white tail. Uh, but I like this yellowy olive tinge on this particular roe deer. Um, I also find roe deer because probably when the time of year that they're harvested or part of the world they come from, they don't grow a real thick under fur um, like white tail does uh, so it's a lot cleaner and easier to work with and I'll just take a, a brush dog hair brush it's really a knit brush and we'll just remove all the guard hairs just to clean it up have something easier to work with now when you lay this in place try not to bring the tips of the deer hair too much further back than the bend of the hook. So I'll take, lay a clump in place, lay two or three wraps and kind of spin the hair a bit. Pull tight. 
and then just work like my deer hair a bit and then um, I have a little stacking tool or a tamping tool you can see here this this particular unit just allows me to push the deer hair tightly into place stroke it all back and take another wrap or two again pull tight and I'll lay in a half hitch here pull all the hair back and just lay a single half hitch just to secure everything all my wraps that I've already placed around the deer hair when I spun in that first bunch. Now I'll take another clump, just a smaller little piece and it's about half the thickness and again I'll prepare it the same way, make sure it's all nice and clean and we'll lay this in the very front here and few good tight lashing turns, stack it again, bring the thread in front and we'll just tie it off right behind the hook eye. Run two, three knot whip finishes. snug and take my scissors and remove the thread. So now as you can see I have everything sort of laid back but I'm going to pull all my deer hair forward except for the tip ends that we had laid out that were laying towards the back. So this is kind of the divide of where my tie-in point was on my original clump. Now I'll take my hair my deer hair and I'll cut it off right in front of the hook eye. And you can push this all back. And if you I mean, if you like it the way it is, you can certainly fish it this way. But I like to trim it back um, with a pair of round scissors and take a little sharper angle. matter of trimming it all nicely. But on the bottom I'll take my cut to be flush or as flush as possible to the hook shank. And now I'll just just clean this all up a bit. Again, try to maintain the same angle as your first set of cuts. It's a little, I find it a little easier to do with a good pair of curved scissors as opposed to a pair of straight edge scissors. And as you can see, it's starting to develop up fairly nice. And now to get the kind of very unique finish to it, what I like to do is just scorch the hair with a lighter. careful with this not to uh, start your pattern on fire but I find that this really does a nice job to finish up the head Yeah, 
And there you have it. A little mini muddler. That's just the way I sort of tie them. Love fishing these on a three fly system as a, a top fly uh, because it pushes a lot of water. Uh, and or in rivers, uh, the same fashion. Maybe a little larger in a size 10, same hook. Um, but I'll run it as a top fly ahead of a heavier streamer pattern. And again, it just pushes a lot of water so fish notice it and pay attention to it and attract to it very quickly. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, have yourself a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.